Hey there internet friends, going to do this little video for our uh, retro let's play for Parasite Eve this month. Um, I'm going to show you how to get Duck Station up and running with Parasite Eve and a couple of options. I will start with actually downloading the Duck Station emulator which is my favourite PlayStation 1 emulator. Um, I'll put links in the description so you can get these pretty easy but pretty much we're just going to grab uh, the latest duck station off github it moves pretty quick um, a lot of regular updates so it's just best to grab the latest release uh, by just clicking on it here uh, and if you scroll down you'll see a whole bunch of releases here we want to grab the duck station uh, windows release don't grab the symbols one that's got debugging stuff for programmers and it actually slows the binary down a bit you don't want that one you just want this one um, I normally do stuff in Linux but I'm just doing this guide in Windows because that's what I'm assuming most people are going to use um, I've already downloaded that so I'm not going to download it again uh, the other bit you want to grab are the games themselves so internetarchive.org has a lot of these games uh, often when you want PlayStation games or anything that's an optical disc best to go look for uh, this redump group uh, redump specialize in optical disc dumps uh, they've got a whole website full of stuff where you can uh, verify uh, optical discs see whether or not you've got a unique one that nobody else has got um, upload metadata to redump so they can see whether or not there's a, a new disc out there or something like that but um, these are, are really good high quality trustworthy dumps uh, that you want to get um, and just looking for um, redump with whatever console you want with archive.org either the internal archive.org search or just telling Google to go look on archive.org often you'll find the games you care about uh, Parasite Eve we're going to look at the first one it's a two disc game so you want to grab both of those discs disc one disc two they come in a zip file uh, and then we'll uncompress those again I'm going to uh, I've already downloaded those so I won't click on them again um, archive.org does do um, sort of a bit of uh, throttling of really high speed downloads so if you find that you're downloading sort of the first couple of hundred meg and it's kind of zippy and then it slows down over the next couple of hundred meg that's pretty normal you get download managers to speed that up or whatever uh, but these are pretty small they're only um, 300 odd meg um, when you start getting into sort of like uh, PlayStation 2 DVD type downloads it gets a bit slower but these ones are usually pretty good so grab both disk 1 and disk 2 zip files uh, and then the other bit you're going to need are the PlayStation BIOS file. So I've got them hosted up on my site under this uh, OKRPS1 directory. I'll put a link again in the description. You can grab those, just a zip file, download those um, and put them wherever you like. So I uh, have just got a directory here. Uh, I've just made a directory called games. In my games directory I've got uh, uh, a couple of things. I've got the BIOS files sitting here in the BIOS directory. I've got the Duck Station uh, released there and I've got the games there. So uh, go ahead and, and extract all those. Uh, these BIOS files I will extract just here in the same path. Uh, Duck Station likewise I will extract here. Extract Duck Station here as well. Uh, and then the games are uh, up to you. I prefer to extract these into directories. Just cause. The search is a bit easier. Alright. Um, so then in the duck station itself, there's two XEs in duck station. There's a no GUI XE, which is like if you have a front end and you want it, the front end to take over and send commands to a command line kind of thing. And then there's this QT. So QT is a, a GUI framework, open source GUI framework. Um, and that's what the duck station GUI is built in so let's open that up uh, so straight into some options to make all this work um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to point to the BIOS so it wants to find them in this location here I'm going to uh, games PS1 BIOS uh, select that and tell it to refresh uh, and it's it's just going to find the right uh, BIOS files for the different regions and it's going to automatically detect the right BIOS to the right game based on the game region so that's all nice and uh, automatic um, you can turn on fast boot here if you don't want to see the PlayStation logo uh, at boot um, I'm going to go down to game list I'm going to add a game list in for this thing to scan I'm going to tell it to scan from there 
it's going to say hey do you want to scan recursively yes and you'll see the games pop up immediately up there so that's pretty cool um, it'll also give you uh, a compatibility rating yeah so that pulls that out of a database online to tell you how well that works with the with the emulator which is pretty cool um, what else can we do while we're here let's do the controller while we're here now I've got my USB game controller so this I've got an 8-bit do um, SN30 Pro SF30 Pro SF30 Pro um, so it's essentially like a looks like a Super Nintendo controller with a couple of analog sticks on it um, and if I go in there you'll see so left analog stick does that right analog stick does that face buttons start and select do that the uh, d-pad moves the hat input and then if I click the L and sticks they their inputs as well so that all kind of works which is nice um, I've got this set obviously in Xbox 360 mode which is kind of the best for uh, Windows I found I don't I don't think Linux doesn't really matter if you happen to use Linux um, there's a direct input mode that works just as well as the Xbox mode I think for Linux um, and there's the, the thing's got a Mac OS mode as well which I haven't tested um, anywho but what I can do is um, I can set all of these to bind. So let's do that. So first things first, I'm going to tell it to be a analog uh, DualShock controller. So this um, particular game uh, takes analog inputs, so you have to configure those. Uh, it's not a not a digital only. Some of the earlier PlayStation games were D-pad digital only. Um, some of the later ones were uh, analog. This one's definitely analog. Hit rebind all uh, to make life easier. So. Up, down, left, right, select, start, triangle, cross, circle, square, L1, L2, R1, R2, L3, R3. Analog, I'm just going to hit space on my keyboard because I don't care about that. So this is the left X axis, so that's the across axis. So I'm just going to move my left thumbstick uh, to the left. Um, and this is where it kind of stuffs up, it takes a double input annoyingly. Uh, my right, all right, so I'm going to re oh, and rumble. Uh, I don't care about that. Right, so I'm going to rebind these. So my left uh, X axis is, I'm just going to push left on the left stick. My left Y axis, I'm going to push up on my left stick. So those axes are correct. And likewise for my right uh, X axis, I'm just going to put either left or right on my right stick. And my right Y axis, either up or down on my uh, right analog stick. Uh, so that's all good. That's sorted. Um, and I'm going to leave everything else default. So my display settings, I'm going to leave all these default. We'll play with these a little bit later. It's going to pick uh, Direct3D by default, and we'll see some other options a little bit later. Um, internal resolution, one by. Again, we'll leave all this default so we can see what happens uh, when we fiddle with that at a later date. Alrighty, so um, hopefully I can just... I don't think I've got any save states. I should have deleted everything on my last test. Yep, that's all good. So I'm just going to uh, double click uh, disk one and it's going to load up and start playing. Just drop my volume down a bit here so I can hear myself think. Um, yeah, so you can go in and out of full screen mode. Um, I think Alt Enter gets you back out. Yep, um, so I'm going to leave it out of full screen mode for now. Um, just so I can show you some configuration items. And eventually the game will start. Uh, now I think by default, if we look at the options, settings, hotkeys, the fast forward button is bound to the tab key. So that at any time you get bored, you can hold tab and just kind of zoom zoom a bit, um, which is really handy if you just want to get past the boring bits or you've played it before or whatever. Um, so I'm going to, you'll notice when you, uh, if you choose continue, if it tries to read the memory card, you'll see messages pop up about it creating a new virtual memory card. That's cool. Um, so I'm going to go new game. Uh, now we're reading the CD-ROM at native PlayStation CD-ROM speeds and we can change that a bit later. Um, there's an enhancement option we can do to make that a lot faster so your load times are a fraction. Uh, and again, all these unskippable cutscenes, we can just hold tab um, to zoom through those. You can watch them, I will not for this particular thing. Um, this little bit of intro here, we want to name the character. So we're just in regular PlayStation graphics mode here and we'll fix that in a sec. 
just going to choose the default name and zoom through all this. All right, so we have a little bit of a chat to this guy and then we have to go inside. So default graphics here, um, we'll fiddle with these in a sec once we get inside, I think, because we zoom in a bit and it might be a good spot to check it. Um, so here we go. We can see it's pretty blocky. We can also see the classic PlayStation, not so much here because we were zoomed out a bit, but the, the classic PlayStation like texture wobble on the characters. Um, see a little bit there as she runs back and forth. We'll probably see it when we, we up res it a bit. So let's do that. Let's get into some settings. Um, we can either pause it or not, whatever. Hit the settings button, go into our display settings. So a couple of things I'm going to do first. You can choose different APIs here, graphics APIs. Uh, cho choose, you know, whatever your hardware works with. Um, DuckStation works with pretty potato hardware as per the, the official uh, manual. It actually says that, um, which is cool. Um, I recommend Vulkan. Vulkan's the best by far for a lot of the effects. It's the fastest. It's uh, It's got a whole bunch of options um, around. Some of the post-processing is only available in Vulkan, I think, um, if you use those settings. Um, the other ones are, are fine. If you've got older hardware and it, it doesn't work on Vulkan, use those by all means, but Vulkan's the best one. The other thing you can do with Vulkan, of course, is choose which adapter you want. So I've got a, a, an AMD chipset in my laptop here. Um, it's got a built-in um, AMD device and it's got a, a discrete one. So I can choose the discrete one there. Um, turn on V-Sync if you want. Uh, I've got a 120 hertz display, so I kind of leave that off. Um, most of these other ones you can leave sync host to, to host refresh rate that will actually change the game speed to match the 60 hertz exactly off your display if you're finding vsync's too teary or laggy um, it can break the game though so probably leave that off unless you absolutely need it um, aspect ratio uh, this makes me really angry and people get this wrong so i'm going to leave it on game native which is going to keep it in forge to three crop i normally turn to none um, which removes the uh, the cropping here um, so, it, you know, old TVs, they, the games were designed for t old TVs, old CRTs that overscan. So you can sort of turn that on if you like. Um, and you can fiddle with these options if you, if you really want, especially when you're in full screen mode um, and you want it to go right to the edge. Um, that's something you can fiddle with. But I'm just going to turn it to none just so we get the underscan a little bit here so you can see it. Um, uh, integer upscaling, so what that does is that changes the game so that it's uh, an exact multiple. So it's either 2 byte or 3 byte or 4 byte or whatever. Um, if you've got pixel art games, definitely turn on integer upscaling only. If you don't have pixel art games, if you've got 3D games, um, turn that off, it's fine. Um, linear upscaling versus non-linear upscaling, you can probably see in the background there, just changes, uh, puts a bilinear filter smear over the top of it. Um, more noticeable when you're doing low resolution. So again, if you're blowing up uh, pixel graphics, but we're going to upscale this in a minute. Um, so I'm going to leave that on actually, because once we upscale, it's going to look really good with that. Um, and then some on-screen display stuff. So I'm going to turn all of these on because they're kind of cool. They'll just show us some information uh, on the screen, like uh, what my input is, um, my current frame rate, uh, resolution, all that kind of stuff. It'll show you not only the um, the resolution uh, of the display of what it's actually showing out at, but what the internal game resolution is. So even though like this particular game is a 30 frame per second game, the console's spitting out 59 point something hertz. So we're, we're emulating at full speed, um, but we get both stats, which are kind of nice, tells us what's going on. Uh, let's go into my enhancement settings here. So internal resolution, this is the fun bit. Um, I'm gonna push mine, now I've got a 1080p display, but I'm gonna push it past that. Um, just to kind of prove a point and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it uh, there for now actually. Um, so hopefully we can see this when um, the character oh, and this sometimes, depending on what I'm doing, freezes my uh, controller if I'm fiddling around with graphic settings. So this is a good time to demonstrate this. If I uh, shut this down at any given time, uh, it's going to take a save state, which is really handy. Right, so if I fire this uh, back up and double click my game disk here, it will load in my uh, my save state and put me back where I was, which is really nice. Um, sometimes it puts me back in digital mode instead of analog mode. I just have to tap the space bar to reset that, or I can uh, probably set that in my controller settings. In fact, 
If I go down here and say force analog on reset, that's probably a better option. Okay, so I'm in game. Um, now hopefully we can see it. If, if this character runs back and forth, I don't know if you can see it. If I go into full screen mode, maybe it'll do a better job of uh, demonstrating it. But um, maybe you can see that texture wobble there. You see a little bit in the hair and a little bit in the shoulders. Um, but if I go back into my enhancement settings, uh, I can turn on geometry correction. So the PlayStation 1 did not have, or did have a sort of geometry uh, correction engine, but it was really poor. Um, this option actually puts in one as if the PlayStation had better hardware uh, than it actually did. So. Um, what it does is it fixes up a lot of that wobble uh, and again you don't see that too much in here but you can kind of uh, make it out especially in her hair um, that's probably the worst bit but the rest of it looks a hell of a lot smoother uh, at that point if I pause the game don't no, bring up my menu this is the other bit too so we've got nice chunky text here so we've what we've done is we've upped our um, resolution our internal resolution um, but all the pixel stuff is still kind of chunky and pixely so you've got a couple of options here if you want to fiddle with those go to the texture filtering uh, first thing I do too is I turn on um, true color rendering so the PlayStation by default used um, slightly lower color depth rendering and used a dithering pattern if it wanted to do transparency um, you can turn on true color there um, and you'll notice that applies straight away you probably see a little flicker there it applies straight away um, and that will get rid of the dithering if you don't like it again whatever you want um, if you prefer it leave it on uh, and then the texture filtering so again mostly around the text and the 2d elements but everything really the all the backgrounds in this game are 2d so it'll affect all of those too um, we can change all these so bilinear is just kind of your normal uh, blur filter um, this uh, I don't know JINC or jink or whatever it does a, tries to do a little bit of a smarter uh, interpolation um, so it just compiles the shaders to draw those and you can see what's going on here in the text um, this really depends right on the game like some games are great with this some games are garbage it really depends on, on what's going on if there's a lot of 2d elements or not uh, and then there's XBR um, so again we'll just compile those shaders to make sure that's working and this one's a little bit more intensive uh, um, there we go so yeah really smooths out stuff uh, images can look okay-ish I guess text can sometimes look a bit weird really up to you I think I just kind of like bilinear most of the time or none nearest neighbor um, really up to you um, we might play with a little bit um, later on all right let's check it out Uh, so again, I'm just going to hit the old tab button to fast forward through this. Now you might notice um, that it's a little bit slower. So it was sort of going at, I don't know, six or seven times speed when I was going fast forward mode before. This time it's going only, what, 300 odd percent. Um, and that's just because I've put all these extra filters and things on. So there's it can only go so fast. It's, uh, what's capping out at 200 frames a second or something. Uh, then we're into an FMV. So again, the, the filters don't apply so much to the FMV on the 3D side, but they do on the 2D side. But again, if you're bored with the FMV, just hit the tab button. Uh, we'll zoom through those. Bit of story spoiler, but this is at the beginning, so you'll find this out for yourself. We'll just try and get into the battle part. So, get through this, push our uh, date aside, off we go. Uh, I don't know if there's a run button on this, I haven't figured that bit out yet, but right now she's the world's slowest runner. Up we go. Alright, so, oh, oh, that's the other thing. Let's pause this. If I go into settings, I can look at uh, enhancement settings. Yes, no. Okay, so I can go into uh, console settings um, and there's a couple options here about whether or not um, I can speed up the CD-ROM emulation. So um, double speed is the standard PlayStation um, CD-ROM, whatever that is, like 300 
kilobytes or 600 kilobytes a second, I can't remember, it's been too long. Um, but you can really um, speed this up. Likewise, the Seek, the actual, like the arm inside the, um, or the laser control assembly inside the, the thing, how fast that goes, you can really zoom that up as well. So do be careful, it can break some games, um, especially games with um, Redbook Audio, CD Audio. This does not have Redbook Audio. Um, it can break some things sometimes. So just play with those if your load times suck and you don't like them. Um, all right, let's go talk to this lady. Um, yeah, so I don't know, we can kind of do a compare, I guess, here. If we look at our display, let's say we drop that back down to one and nearest. Uh, and then likewise, get rid of our geometry correction so we've got wobbly textures a bit. Zoom, zoom through the, the boring bits. Alright, so uh, this lady's going to shoot at us in a sec. We'll try and dodge it. And then we'll attack her. Cool. Zoom, zoom again. So let's uh, go back in here, change our settings once more. Let's go 1440 by linear with geometry correction. Uh, and compare and contrast, look, looks pretty good. Nice and clear. So again, really up to you. bits um, and I'll zoom through this as well there's a scene up here that kind of demonstrates what's going on so we chase her out the side uh, and you see this background here so this is a good example where we can keep the um, keep the the actual 3d resolution pretty high but if we go to our texture filtering um, we can see here, so that's all this stuff is uh, 2D elements, so it's not going to be affected by the, the 3D resolution. Um, if we change that to so 3D resolution back to native, uh, we can see our sprite, our 3D character at the front here is pretty awful looking. This kind of remains the same. Likewise, if we shoot that all the way back up, um, you know, maybe a bit of clarity gain, but um, just because we're in nearest neighbor mode, it's all kind of chunky. Um, but yeah, heaps of options here on how we can make it look different. Uh, totally up to you how you want to uh, look at this kind of stuff. Um, and then yeah, the, the edge blending or no edge blending is where yeah, there's a strong mix of um, 2D and 3D elements. Um, I find things like um, Castlevania Symphony of the Inner Night where you've got the, it's mostly 2D with some 3D. Um, that tends to look a bit better sometimes with these options, not really. Um, actually, no, not really. Uh, but whatever. Anyway, uh, your choice as to how you want to do that. Um, so that's about it. Hopefully that gets you playing the game. Um, oh, the only other thing is it's a multi-disc game, obviously. Um, so at some point it's going to ask you to change discs. Uh, there'll be a, a section in the game where you have an opportunity to save and change disc. Um, just simply click the change disc button, simple as that. Um, it'll ask you what you want to do. Pick your games list, pick your, your disc 2, um, and it'll it'll simulate the whole process of a PlayStation opening the tray and, and uh, changing the disc. Um, yeah, that should be it. Otherwise, um, yeah, have yourself a lot of fun. Hope it's an enjoyable experience. Uh, questions in the forums, I guess. See ya.